do this one more time to kind of explain how this thing works. So you've got the ceramic piece there encased in rubber. The rubber's got a tight seal against the metal. You've got this piece here, which is your black ceramic encased in rubber. The rubber touches the brass. It's gonna slide down onto this brass. The spring's gonna put pressure against it. And then on the back side here, you've got a O-ring that goes between the brass and that cut mark there. And that's gonna go on the back side of the propeller. So I'm changing the seals on this pump to the right right here. I've got it valved off, which I had to use a cheater to get that thing to turn. This thing's from 98. Got this butterfly looking valve here shut. Got the motor mark down there on the bottom base. We just not got her completely out. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. Just gotta clean this uh, stuff off, which isn't too bad. Just surprising. Looks to me like they added silicone to it, which is really making it easy to remove. I uh, think I might end up trying that because I like that. That's that made it really, really nice to pull apart. Normally you got to chisel that crap off. This literally came right apart for me. Took that bolt off the end of it. Slid the propeller right off the end with the, the little crowbar there. The other section, so we can take it apart. Here's the seal. It got cracked at right there. That's that ceramic piece right there. It's so freaking dirty you can't hardly tell anything. But there's your black piece that mats against the white piece for your seal. I gotta pry this out of there yet. Gotta clean that out a little bit. So we got it in there. We ended up using the little piece of paper there. What I ended up doing, once I had it pretty much pushed into place with my hand, I went ahead and put the flat side of this down on it and then kind of put more weight on it so that it was proportionally pushing on all sides to get it down in there, which, you know, this is not brand new spring chicken. This is 1998, so what is it, 20 some years old. And what I see on the back side is clean, far as uh, clean and even on both sides. I think I'll finish wiping a little bit more of that stuff out of there. They don't want you to touch it with your fingers, which, give me a break. That's unrealistic. But as long as you clean it up when you're done, you don't cause any scarring on the face of the uh, white or black seals, it'll be fine, as far as my opinion. Now we gotta get this back onto this piece here. It's where the lines come in handy. I've gotta finish squeezing it together yet. I gotta get these bolts back in here. perfect just yet that's why we're leaving it kind of loose and slowly getting it back in there so we checked the bearings and stuff they felt good but i want to get fresh grease in there we're going to flush that out a little leakage there we was able to force it all through there we're going to spin this thing some more and get it all out that way you aren't packed full of pressure and get that cleaned out but we flushed through it the bearings hadn't been getting greased very often prior to us it's lived a hard life. Now the top one, it looks like some really nasty crap came out of there. You're really not supposed to use different motor greases or any, you know, different greases from what I've always read. Maybe that only applies to motors. Like I said, there's no grind, anything like that. I put my ear up against the body there. I was listening for it because I've had a job where everything seemed like it was fine. We got it together, then I found out the bearings had a whine to it. So we got it back in there. We've got that reattached. We've got this cleaned up with the brush wheel. We got all that inside there cleaned up with the brush wheel and blew out before we put it together. We don't want little chunks of crap coming down and getting in between the, your special seal here. You gotta be careful that you don't touch the actual shiny part. Lubricated the back side. That's gonna slide right down onto this brass. That rubber slides right down onto it like that. Spring keeps the tension on it. That brass is lubricated with that same special uh, silicone lubricant that they gave you. This is going to go straight down. Carefully slide that on to that right there. They did not attach that rubber to that brass or that stainless piece there. What I did is I laid this down horizontal so I didn't have to worry about it falling into it and getting offset. Slid it on, tilted it back so you can see what's going on. There's a rubber O-ring here, which really it's a square ring more than it is an O-ring. That fits right down into that groove. That is going to mate up against this back side of the propeller. 
which we already wire brush wheeled that off. And then when we finish up, the final seal is going to be this washer that has rubber in between it that's going to go on top of this propeller like that right there. And that's the old seal right there. That's just going to go boom like that right there. Before we get too far here, we got to look at the set key that goes on here. That set key just barely misses that rubber. That's got to match up with the propeller here. And while we're doing that, we got to make sure that slides right into the set key slot. I went ahead and ran the wire brush wheel on that lat surface there. Everything's clean. That's pretty stuck going up to there. So you got some ceiling going on there between the shaft of that bolt and that. I just got to shove it together and get it threaded on. Nothing's hitting, everything's smoothly turning. Feels pretty good. You can see in the past where it may, may have hit it. Maybe that's the way they grooved it, I don't know. It feels like it may have hit it one time, whether it be rust or what, and uh, kind of carved it up a little bit. This has probably been changed, I bet, a couple times. I'm gonna do what they did last time. I'm gonna add a little bit of the high temp silicone around the corners and help hold the gasket in place. And then uh, it'll also make it a lot easier to get apart next time, which, this thing came apart with minimal fight. So I've got that on there. Everything feels good around it. Just got to add that little silicone behind it and on top of it. And then we'll start matching it back up over there, which I've already put blue marks in different spots to help make it a little easier. I've got me a very thin little layer all the way around there. And now we'll put a little layer on top of that so it mates against the uh, housing. And got it like that right there. Now, I know we've used this trick before. I've had to do plumbing at different companies. Luckily, I don't have to really do it here too much. Uh, but sometimes you'll even use silicone with rubber O-ring on your basket strainers. And sometimes you just can't get them perfect. And a lot of times it holds a lot better than what uh, Plumber's Putty does. So, you know, I ain't gonna put it past it. Like I said, it's actually in the instructions there. I've never done it like this before, but it just made sense to me for as nice as it went, uh, came apart and it wasn't leaking there, so obviously it works pretty good. One of the good things about having that in there like that is it's holding that seal in place. Otherwise, it could get crinkled up and go to crap on you. So I uh, got the first two started. Just gonna work our way around, slowly pull it in evenly. We got it together. They had some bolts that were a little short. So we had to get some other ones. Luckily they had some. We had to cut them down with the old bandsaw there, which made it a lot nicer. Right now what we did is we opened up that return side. I've got it open. There's a bleed port here. What I could have done was opened up because it had, you know, pressure up to here when we stopped it. So it would in water straight through and then bled it up to here. That would have been an idea. But unfortunately, these things are so plugged up, they've never been used. What I ended up doing was opening the side, hoped that it would chush most of it down to here, uh, shut off both pumps, open the butterfly slowly so that it would go up here to my oil separator. And right now I'm just kind of surging my pump, the uh, one that was actually still hooked up, and getting the last bits. You can hear a little squirt there. This here is like a transfer switch. It allows either one pump or the other. So it's kind of a, it's a double throw non-fusible. There you go. Only one can be powered. But you can hear the, the bleeder up there. So my thought was, we'll go ahead and slowly make sure I got all the air out as much as possible. You're gonna get some, unfortunately. So next thing I gotta do is get uh, my straight edge and stuff, and get this thing leveled up. When I did this, I did not mess with any shims that would have been in the motor. Uh, we're gonna have to order seals for this. So I condemned this uh, nearly six months ago and with the air conditioning season hitting, we haven't had time. The boiler was not a humongous deal. However, it is used for quite a few things here and it does have to run year round. Now this does have a regular auto fill, which half the time doesn't fill up. We have a bypass fast fill there, which I just added. The newest boiler's got new gauges that are actually working. That one's showing me 15 to 12 area. I think more like 15. I'm gonna go with that one down there. The poor man's way of getting us back was using your markings down there, along with your crowbar and your straight edge and just lining it up, making sure you're good in all directions. Now, there's companies out there who uses lasers and all this other, you know, I don't have that. 
but this flex coupling can absorb a little bit. All right, here we go. Let's give this thing a shot. Not seeing any leakage. We'll go ahead and change the ones on the chiller over here. This one here is the uh, chiller circulator. We've got bolts that were pretty rusted in there. We've got them sprayed and soaking right now. The uh, went in and sprayed penetrating oil in there to get the threads prepped for reassembly. Got the motor loosened, slid back, got everything marked just like we did before. This one actually slides in the track there. Well, we got it. It took a little bit of prying on all corners with the uh, pry bar. Kind of hammered in between the where the bolts go. Worked my way around slowly and eventually came loose. Of course, you've got glycol from that stop there to that stop over there, which was easily probably 10 gallons. So we ended up using the grinder wheel there to go through and clean this thing up. As you can see, this is what normally is like uh, usually all rusted, your gaskets are stuck on there, which I got a little more cleaning to do. I like this gasket remover tool here. It works really good. It's a regular flat razor, which I'm getting kind of rough on it. That's why it's angled like that. But it literally gets right through there and helps take them right off. Same thing as before. We got that old piece of junk out of there. It's right there on the floor, looking pretty ratty. You can see the black stuff there. That's the actual other piece that goes to it. It's all ripped up dug the rubber out of it, ran the brush wheel on it, which I did with that part with my little grill. Cleaned it all out, put a little bit of the silicone stuff right there it is. Put that only on the rubber side, shoved it down as far as I could. Put that on top of it to protect the white surface. Use the brass, put it on top of that like that. Shoved down so that it uniformly pushed all the way around so that way I didn't crack it. So at this point, that looks like it's completely in there. I cleaned that up, painted it, and then put the rubber back down. So it's pretty good. I'd like to have done it to that, but I'm not gonna get it on its mating surface. That right there is the reason why I cleaned most of that rust crap off, which I'm gonna clean a little more off because I do not wanna get that rust in between there on my seal. That'd be really bad. I cleaned most of the other stuff off the outside here. That was really loose and nasty looking, but I kind of forgot that piece right there. So I'm going to clean that real quick. Got that cleaned up, blew it out with the blower. Got these edges here because that's going to mate up against that piece right there. We do not have to add anything to the white. So you got to keep that thing perfectly clear. You're not supposed to put your fingers on it or anything like that. So We'll clean that up with a rag here in a second. Okay, we're gonna do this one more time to kind of explain how this thing works. We've got the ceramic piece there encased in rubber. The rubber's got a tight seal against the metal. Now, you've got this piece here, which is your black ceramic encased in rubber. The rubber touches the brass. It's gonna slide down onto this brass. The spring's gonna put pressure against it. And then on the back side here, you've got a O-ring that goes between the brass and that curve right in that little cut mark there. And that's gonna go on the back side of the propeller. Then the bolt is gonna go through the center of that propeller, has a rubber between the head of the bolt going down into the spindle like this right here. And that basically seals it. So everything on the inside of this brass is completely dry, nothing happens. The outside's got the water on it and that's how it seals. The spinning part, the friction, what have you, is on the black to the white. So as time goes on and crud gets down into there, that ends up eating away at it and causes uh, abrasive uh, problems. And that's how it starts to leak. So uh, all we've done is we've cleaned everything up. So we've got this here. I got to put this on horizontally. So I'm gonna lay this back down the uh, spindle there and then slide it on horizontally. Then I'll put on the uh, brass afterwards. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you too, if you have problems getting that old spring mechanism there, oh, that one there's all gummed up, full of crud, and it won't slide out. What I did is I cranked this bolt all the way in so that nothing can be damaged. I will gently let it hit the floor. The weight is going to hit against this and the threads, so it's not going to damage anything. That's why I want it all the way in there. The threads are pretty strong. And basically then it's just kind of like a weighted sledgehammer 
and it eventually pops down, then you can pull it the rest of the way off, or at least it gets out far enough that you can pry it out with your pry bar there. But that's what I ended up doing to uh, get it off. Uh, the other one slid right off. This one here did not. I'm gonna go on her like that. All the way up against the other one. There you go, it's mating surface against it. Now you've got the set key here, like that. This comes on the back side, matches up against it. Now you've got that O-ring, or square ring as I'm kind of calling it, because it's square. It goes on the end right there, like that. That seals it against this piece right here. I've got that on there, tightened it up by hand with a wrench. Just used my crowbar, wedged it in there so it wouldn't turn. Gotta be careful. You can see what the last guy did when he was prying this off. He bent that, which probably could cause you some problems with your bearings. Definitely not a good thing. Would have been nice to have known that, but there's no way to know it. It's not horrible, but definitely isn't helping it none. Um, not brave enough to really smack it too hard and try to bend it back because it could bust into like a casting. I'm not gonna take a chance of that. Put a thin bead. This is uh, some RTV silicone high temp stuff that I had left over from another job. I didn't use it all. Put a little bead on there and smooth it out with my finger. I just want a very, very thin piece there. I'm really using it more of an anti-seize for the gasket so it doesn't uh, stick like it did last time. Also, it'll help seal up any spots where it's not making the greatest contact with it. You don't want to get any of that into the inside. If you do, you want to wipe that off and get it out of there. We got the gasket on now, and then we're just going to put another thin layer around it, and then horn swaggle it back over there into place. One, two, three, four, work your way around just like you're doing a tire so that it pulls it in evenly. We've already spun this, made sure that everything feels free. I already took in out the uh, ports. I used a whole freaking tube of electric motor bearing grease and filled this thing up. It's been uh, one day now. This one here is not leaking. That's the one we first did. So we're looking good on that. And then uh, going over here to our other one. Got everything cleaned up. Touched it up a little bit where the paint was missing. And we're not leaking or anything on that one. So we're good on that. And all the braces and uh, shields and stuff are back in place. Motors are greased. Everything's been purged on the uh, water side of things. Or any air would have went up there to the air separator up on the top left there. And then uh, opened up our outgoing side. I shut the pumps down when I did this so that there was no uh, artificial flow to disturb it. Didn't really hear much air of any sort, so I'll probably have to go around to different air handlers and make sure that uh, we got cool water hitting all of them. But. That's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Just a quick uh, little job here on the video, but uh, nowhere near that quick uh, in real life. So it's done, it's completed. If you guys enjoyed it, if you would like, share, subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on the